Hey DJ Tech Tools, it's Chris Bruckley in the lab today with the Akai AMX and AFX. Now I'm not going to dawdle too much with the introduction, okay? There's a lot to talk about with these two things. I'm going to get right to it, explain a little bit about what they do and show you the different kind of setups and scenarios in which you might want to use them, what's good and what's not so good. So let's get into it. Now we're going to start with the AMX. Now this one is kind of hard to describe really, okay? It's basically, in many respects, it's a mixer. You've got master output volume, you've got EQs on each channel, two channels with up faders and a cross fader, in this case an awesome cross fader, the mini inner fader um, from Audio Innovate, so that's in there, does all the regular sort of mixery things that you would want a mixer to do, but it's not a mixer. It is basically a controller for Serato DJ's internal mixing engine, so whilst you can play your regular vinyl through it, it will have to be with the actual unit hooked up to Serato DJ and put it into through mode. So it can be done. Um, but ultimately, yeah, it's more a controller than it is a mixer. Now that does mean it is cheap. It is basically $250 plus a hundred for the DVS plugin. So for 350, you've got yourself an instant Serato DJ DVS solution. Um, and that is unprecedented in the Serato world. Nothing has been that cheap before. Uh, even in the tractor world as well, nothing has been that cheap. This is astonishing for DVS you know, control, full DVS control. And the DVS just works really, really nicely. I'll just show you how it will work. Just as smoothly as anything else in the Serato DJ world, just loads up and plays. Scratching all works really well. Latency's great. Sound quality is good. I've used this for about 20 hours at gigs altogether since I've had it through for testing. And I've never once thought, oh yeah, the sound quality has gone down. I've obviously, all because it's only got phono outputs, I've just run it into uh, mixers, like a sub mixer. So it's gone through Pioneer mixers, Allen and Heath mixers, and it sounded great through everything. It hasn't negatively affected any of the systems that I put it into. So very happy with that. Um, it gives you a lot for your money as well. This, you know, you've got basic controls for your internal mode. So if you haven't got the DVS plugin activated, or if you're just using the actual internal playback mode, you can just use temp key points, play and pause, and sync buttons there as well. You can scroll through tracks in your library, and you can load tracks in your library. You can search through a track just like this. If we just hold down the search button, and then the actual central knob, I can actually use it as kind of like a rudimentary, almost like a jog wheel to set a precise point where I want to set, say, a cue point on there. Um, and I can do that and line it up to see exactly where I want to go from. And that works really nicely and smoothly. Um, you've got obviously your panel controls to go between your different panels. Um, you've got the touch sensitive buttons for the EQs and so on. So if we get those activated, obviously they're full kill EQs, but if you turn on the touch mode, you can touch them and cut all out like that. And that also puts the combo filter into loop roll filter as well. So, which is a cool feature from the Newmark NV and the NS7 II. I really liked it on that from Newmark. You've got Q mix, you've got the Q gain and master output. You've got crossfader curve and obviously two inputs on the back there. You've got a grounding post and two inputs for two turntables or line level sources. So you can run in your CDJs or your vinyl turntables to it. And then those RCA Fano connectors for output now. It is fully bus powered. There is no external power supply option for this. And that does have one impact, which is a little bit negative in that the actual output volume is not massive. It's okay. Um, I've never found it to be a massive problem at any of my gigs I've done with it, but it is something to bear in mind. If you turn up at gigs constantly and you're having to run really high levels on the mixer to get good level out of the system, then you're going to be possibly in trouble with that AMX because it just doesn't have the loud output of something like the Native Instruments Control Z1, something like that, or just even a standalone mixer or controller that has mains power. This thing isn't quite the same level of welly that it can put out. It's not bad, as I say, but it's it's touching, you know, being not usable for some situations. But for average setups, it's going to be just fine. Um, you know, DVS control for 350 bucks is, is pretty astonishing. Um, you can also adjust the BPM from the unit as well. So if you're playing like on a train or a plane or something, you're just mess messing around in your headphones, practicing some mixes. Um, in internal mode, you can hold shift and just adjust the BPM. Now that's one thing that I would point out as well is the resolution on that is not great at the moment. Basically you can go in steps of plus 
or minus 0.3 BPM, no, a percent rather, which is not a lot. So you can see if I go to, I want to try and get this to 124 dead. I can't, it's either 123.8 or 124.2. So if you are using this without DVS control, external control, that is a touch fiddly, and I would prefer it as like points, you know, 0.1 uh, percent resolution, something like that, maybe even lower. And like I have said that that is doable with the hardware, it's just in the software. So hopefully Serato will sort that out in a future version of Serato DJ. Um, form factor wise, you know, absolutely great. It's very compact, it's very small, it's gonna fit in any bag. And with the forthcoming case that they've shown me, you're gonna be able to basically store it safely on the move, but also raise it up to the level of a CDJ or turntable. And I think that's where this thing really is gonna shine, is for people who go out to gigs and they have terrible equipment there. They might have some good, you know, decent turntables, but a cross, you know, mix it with a broken crossfader or something like that. And you're gonna turn up, rather than an SL box, you're just gonna plug this in, gives you a wicked crossfader, gives you EQs and so on, gives you your controls over loading and everything else, and you can just plug into the house mixer and not worry about the house mixer. And that is a big deal really for 350 bucks, pretty astonishing value, really impressed with the AMX. So now we move on to the AFX. Now this is somewhat less exciting to be honest. I mean, you know, we have seen add-on controllers for Serato since the days of Scratch Live with the Denon 1000 or whatever it was back, you know, these things have been around for a while. This does it in some interesting ways. It's got some interesting features though. So it's definitely worth sort of investigating. Basically it's controls up to four decks. So you've got one and three on the left, two and four on the right. You've got your full set of the pretty standard now Serato DJ FX controls in the middle. So you've got the four buttons on each side and you've got the three knobs plus your beat knobs. So that's all fully covered and that works very, very nicely. Um, you've got touch mode on those as well. So you can turn, touch and turn an effect on and off very simply using just touch on the top of it for instant, you know, on and off gratification. It's, it's cool. Um, you've got a quantize button in the middle. This is the first bit of Serato DJ software I've seen with a quantize button on there. It's been in the software for a little while, so that's good to see. You can switch that on and off much more easily than having to go to your trackpad and doing it. You've got the wicked little, I'll just move on to deck two, which is what's playing now. Um, the actual control for your loop length there. So you've basically got a one beat loop which is 01, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. And then as you go below one, it goes to well, the decimal point shows up there and you've got half, quarter, eighth, sixteenth, thirty seconds. So you've got full control of your loops and that's cool. I like having that little display there. I really liked it on the Control X1 Mark II from Native Instruments. I love it here too. So you've got full control. At a glance, you can see, and that's missing from a lot of Serato DJ setups. You can't really see at a glance what your loop length is. And in this case, you can do it very, very simply. Um, you've got your flip functions there. This actually comes with a flip expansion pack license in the box, so that's all there. And it works very nicely. You've got dedicated record, start, loop, and on and off. And if you go into the double tap the manual loop, you can load and save your, your flips to that as well. Um, the buttons themselves are very simple. You go to cues mode, and if you're in internal mode, then you can actually do cue and play just from the actual unit itself. And there's stutter and you've got sync as well. And it still gives you your four cue points at the top, and that's your transport mode, basically. You can go to all eight cue points instead. Auto loops, if you prefer a button for your auto loops, and you've got loop rolls as well. Manual loop mode, slicer and slicer loop we're now familiar with. You've got sampler mode as well. And velocity sensitive sampler mode too. So, you know, full complement of pad controls. Um, the actual, once you get into the transport mode, you can actually then also scroll through your tracks with this central knob. It's very multi-function this thing. You know, there's a lot to look at on it. Um, and then you can load Obviously you need to make sure you're set to the right deck all the time, uh, but you can then load a track up to that deck and off you go. So we move up to the touch strip, which is quite a unique feature amongst these add-on controllers. The DDJ SP1 from Pioneer doesn't have it. The Reloop Neon doesn't have it. You know, this is quite a, a unique thing really. You've got basically a search mode, which takes you through the track at any kind of 
speed that you want quickly to the end. You can see the LEDs at the top are lighting up and that shows you where you are on the track, which is quite a nice little bit of useful visual feedback. You've got pitch bend, so if you're in internal mode, you can pitch bend up and down quite happily. And you've also got the SFX mode. So as you can see here, I've got three effects assigned to my right hand effects bank. Turn them on and this will actually temporarily put them up or down where you want them to be so that's a nice and it will reset immediately to where they were so if i set them on to begin with and then do it i can move them up and down it'll go back to where i previously set them it's a cool little effect and i think with you know a bit of time practicing with that you could actually come up with some very cool little tweaks and little tricks to do with your effects using that which is really nice one disappointment about this touch strip for me is that unlike the um, search and turn that knob on the AMX you don't have any way of doing sort of fine transport control so for example you know if I want to move ahead one beat now in this track over here on the right to get and set a cue point over there the only way I can do it is with my trackpad basically or with some kind of external control if I'm just working internally I can't do it what I'm going to do is just fire up the Novation Twitch and show you what I mean by that so this is how it works on the Novation Twitch and on the Control X1 Mark II from Native Instruments as well. The touch strip, whilst it's playing, you can do the pitch bend up and down, but when it's cued, it also gives you that ability to swipe back and forth through the track and use it kind of like a jog wheel. You know, you can almost do a spin back with it, but it's not for that. It's not designed for scratching and so on. It's designed so you can actually go to a precise point in the track like that and then hit a cue point and get it dead on. So yeah, as you can see, the Twitch works in a slightly different way with the touch strip. It's got that extra functionality, which the AFX just doesn't quite have. Um, it's the same with the X1 Mark II from Native Instruments as well. And that is that highlights my sort of one disappointment, really. I was hoping that this would be basically an X1 Mark II, but for Serato DJ, but it's just not quite there. You haven't got any way to permanently adjust the BPM up and down. The pitch bend works great, but you can't actually adjust. And also you haven't got that playhead adjustment. So if you wanted to use this and an SL box as your, uh, with an external mixer, it's not really gonna happen. You haven't quite got enough control for that. And that is a disappointment, but not a deal breaker because this is so useful as a DVS add on if you've got a controller which doesn't have all the pads and so on this is a great addition to that as well and also using them as a combo and that's what i've done at all the gigs i've done with these i've just used these two together no external sources no external control just the afx and the amx together and then you get all those functions that you do want so you've got the bpm adjustment on that shift function there you've got the playhead control on the search there on the amx so using them together is definitely an X1 sort of alternative, an X1 and Z1 alternative. You can use these together and they work fantastically for you. I've done, as I say, hours of gigs, really happy with them. If you are gonna buy one of these or both of them, please do support our DJ Tech Tools community by buying them from our store at djtechtools.com. And please also check out the written review over at the site for a bit more detail and so on. And thank you for watching.